everybody! Welcome to the Jade and Stitches show. A little while ago we did a live stream in which we talked about the fact that Mr. and Stitches and I reset the craft room for 2019 and in doing so I realized just how much variegated yarn I've managed to collect over the years. I had it all stashed away in a box last year and I never really looked at it. So as you can see I have it all around me. I wanted to do what we did last year, take it all out, put it in my face and I'm going to use it up. So one of the things we want to do this year is come up with projects to use up variegated yarn. We know a lot of you guys have collected it because it's beautiful, but it sometimes just ends up sitting on the shelf. So we have devised the first project of 2019 to use up some of that variegated yarn. You could actually use any yarns you wanted for this project, but it especially looks good with variegated yarn. And what is it? Well, a great big beautiful basket. How big, she says? This big. This is a big basket. It's bigger than 14 inches across, bigger than 14 inches tall. Um, it's going to have a little bit of stretch to it. And it's one of those baskets that it's you can sit it at your feet and keep your yarn in it, your works in progress. You might even want to keep all of your socks in it. It's big enough that you could plunk it in a kid's room and keep all of those spare stuffed toys stuck in it, or maybe even bundle up some clothing and have it sit there. Maybe your off seasonal stuff, your sweaters in the summer, maybe your t-shirts in the winter, whatever you want a great big basket for. The trick here is that we are using three different balls of yarn held together at the same time. And I'm gonna get Mr. and Stitches to zoom in on that beautiful colorway. So those are three completely different variegated yarns. Like I said, you could use three solids or Treat it like a scrap project, just work in any old thing that you might have lying around. But I'm using variegated yarns, and when you mix them all together, you get this absolutely fabulous, colorful, tweed kind of look. So, three strands held together, a very big hook equals one very big functional basket. So enough chatter, let's grab our hooks, grab all of our variegated yarn, head on over to the craft table, and we will stitch up a great, big, beautiful basket together. Visit our shop and purchase a pattern. You'll help support our show. And we'll put a link to our shop in the description box down below. In order to make our great big baskets, we are going to be holding three strands of yarn held together at once. So it helps to have three different balls going. It's also a real yarn eater, so you're going to want approximately 300 grams per ball. So 900 grams in total. I'm using a medium worsted weight size yarn, which is also a size four. They're all the same size and weight, but they're completely different colors, which is what's going to make this basket so pretty. You're going to need a pair of scissors, a yarn needle, and I'm using a really big hook today. This is a 10 millimeter, also known as an N or a size 15 in the US, not a P. I don't know why that says P. <laughs> it's also a triple zero in the UK, so a nice big hook. And if you're not already subscribed, take a moment to hit that button and the bell so you never miss another episode. And once you've got all that together, we can get started. Because we're using three strands of yarn held together, you want to remember to be patient with yourself. This is a bit of a strange feel when you're holding three separate balls all going at the same time. You might want to have them all sitting in separate bowls so as they bounce around they don't intertwine with each other too much or get complicated or tangled. Um, and it'll also help keep them from rolling away from you. And of course always stop and take a moment to pull up some slack so that you're always feeding the yarn relatively evenly as you go. So take all three strands held together. We're going to begin by making a cinch circle. So all the stitch stitches are sort of done the same. You just have to remember that you're using a bigger hook and you're always going to be using those three strands held together as though they were one big thick strand of yarn. Once you've chained one to secure your cinch circle, you're going to work eight single crochet into that circle. So remember, you are using all three of those strands together as one big one. You want to make sure that you get the strands or you get your hook all the way back through all of the little strands on your hook. So 
This will take a little getting used to, especially if you've never done multi-strand crochet before. So be patient with yourself and just work eight single crochet into that cinch circle. Once you've worked eight single crochet into that cinch circle, grab all three of those little short tails, make sure you got all three of them, and cinch up that circle nice and tightly. We're not joining our rows as we go, we're just going to keep working around and around and around. So we're going to work our first stitch into the first stitch that began row one. This one's always a little bit tight, so just sort of get your hook in there. I'm going to work over my short tails, but you can also just push yours to the back and weave them in later. We're going to work two single crochet into each stitch all the way around. So at the end of row one, you had eight stitches. At the end of row two, you'll have 16. At the end of row two, you should have 16 stitches. Take a moment to stretch out your hands if you're new to working multiple strands. It might take a little getting used to. You might be squeezing your fingers in a different way or holding your hook a little differently, especially since it's a bigger hook. So remember with this project, you wanna take a moment every so often to just pause, shake out your hands, shake out your wrists so that we don't get all tight while we're working with this extra thick yarn and an extra big hook. Row 2, 16 stitches all the way around. I already love the coloring that is starting to happen from the three separate balls of variegated yarn coming together. We're going to continue to increase in row 3, and here's the pattern. We're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch, and remember you want to get your hook through the entire stitch. Treat all three of those strands of yarn as if they were one. Two single crochet into the first stitch, one single crochet into the stitch after that. Repeat eight times in total, and you'll have 24 stitches at the end of row three. At the end of row three, you'll have 24 stitches. We're still increasing for row four. Make sure you're still working all three of those strands held together. Into the first stitch, we're going to work two single crochet. and a single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And that's the little pattern to repeat all the way around. So you'll repeat this eight times in total. So that was set number one. You work two single crochet into the first stitch of the set and a single crochet into each of the next two stitches. And at the end of row four, you'll have 32 stitches. At the end of row four, you'll have 32 stitches. Again, just loving how these three variegated colors are coming together to make that nifty, crazy tweed look. We're still increasing for row five. We're going to begin each set with two single crochet into the first stitch. And a single crochet into each of the next three stitches. You'll repeat that eight times in total all the way around and you'll have 40 stitches at the end of row five. At the end of row five, you'll have 40 stitches. We're still increasing for row six. We're going to begin with two single crochet in the first stitch of the set. And a single crochet into each of the next four stitches. So two single crochet to begin each set, single crochet into each of the next four stitches. Repeat that eight times in total, and you'll have 48 stitches at the end of row six. At the end of row six, you'll have 48 stitches. We are still increasing. We're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch of row seven. and a single crochet into each of the next five stitches. So two single crochet into the first stitch of the set, single crochet into each of the next five stitches, and at the end of row seven, you'll have 56 stitches. At the end of row seven, we'll have 56 stitches. We're still increasing. For row eight, we're going to begin with two single crochet into the first stitch, And remember, if you have to stop and flex your fingers or stretch out your hands, don't be afraid to do that. So two single crochet into the first stitch of the set, 
and then you're going to single crochet into each of the next six stitches. You're going to repeat that eight times in total, and you'll have 64 stitches at the end of row eight. At the end of row eight, you'll have 64 stitches. We are going to continue increasing. We're working on row nine now. Row nine begins with two single crochet into the first stitch. And then you're going to single crochet into each of the next seven stitches. So one single crochet into the next seven. You begin each set with two single crochet in the first stitch, single crochet into each of the next seven. Repeat that eight times in total, and we'll be up to 72 stitches all the way around. At the end of row nine, you'll be up to 72 stitches. We're going to do one more row of increasing because we want a nice wide bottom on our basket. So one more row of increasing. We begin row 10 the same way. We're going to work two single crochet into the first stitch. And then you're going to single crochet once into each of the next eight stitches. So two single crochet into the first stitch, single crochet into each of the next eight stitches. Repeat that eight times in total, and you'll have 80 stitches at the end of row 10. At the end of row 10, you'll have 80 stitches, and if you lay it flat and press it down, any of that warping you might see happening while you're working will disappear. But don't worry too much because once we turn this into a basket, your bottom will sit flat. This is about 30 centimeters or almost 12 inches across in diameter. So that is quite a nice wide base to start our basket on. So that's the end of row 10. We're actually going to slip stitch into the next stitch just to finish it off. And then we're going to chain one to begin row 11. And for row 11, we're going to work around the post of every single stitch, beginning with this one here. So we slip stitched into this stitch. We're going to work that post to start. The easiest way to get the post to pop up on your hook is to take your hook, come from behind, poke it through the two stitches that sit next to each other. And that's the post that gets popped up on your hook. Then you can just single crochet as normally, and remember that first one could be a little tricky, so just take your time. There you go. And they get easier from here on out. So that's the first post. Now we're going to do the next post. And these posts are pretty thick, so you just come through the stitch from the back to the front, go back out the other one, it'll pop the post up on your hook. Just take your time picking up your loops, and then single crochet. You can work a little looser for this row. Take your time, in through one stitch, out through the other, pick up a loop, and single crochet. Remember you want to keep those three strands of yarn going as if they were one big one. Then it's just through the next stitch, back out through the stitch next to that, pick up a loop around the post and single crochet. Take your time. You're going to have 80 of these all the way around because there are 80 stitches, therefore there are 80 posts. And like I said, it's a little funny, so you want to just take your time picking up each post, pick up a loop around the post, make sure you're still working all three of those strands and single crochet. Take your time. I'll see you at the end of row 11. Phew, that was a slog, wasn't it? <laughs> Your 80th post stitch will be right on top of this little jog where we slip stitched and then the, the pull up row sort of starts here. And there's going to be like a little, you'll sort of see your chain one. It should your, your last stitch should be right next to it. And all you're going to do is just Put your hook in that next or first stitch of row 11. That's where we're going to start row 12. And we're going to just keep working around and around like we did the bottom. Now you probably have something that looks like this <laughs> because you've been working rather tightly. So flatten it down or flip it upside down and you can start to pull up that row 11. 
so that you see that little ridge row. And what that does is it flattens out your bottom. It gives your basket sort of a, a flat bottom to sit on. So it'll look like, it'll be much more obvious after a few rows, but that ridge row sits up along the edge. And there we go. Now all we have to do is just single crochet in each stitch all the way around and around and around and around. No increasing, no decreasing for several rows because we want to make our baskets nice and tall. So I'm going to let you work row 12 and then I'll hook back up with you and we'll talk row numbers. At the end of row 12, you may have something that looks like this. So your entire basket may want to lie flat and you're probably wondering, hey, where did the ridge and the edge of my basket go? Don't worry, you start to loosen up again once you're not working a ridge row. So if it's laying flat, no problem, because the more rows we add, the more it will turn into a basket. And if you're already looking like a bit of a basket and your row is sitting flat, that's fine, that means you've just got really nice even tension, so no worries. You are now going to work another 18 rows. Yes, 18 rows on top of that. So we just finished row 12. You should still have 80 stitches all the way around. Every row from here on out will have 80 stitches in it. And like I said, if you tend to run out of yarn, just tie in another ball as you go because all of those different colors together are still gonna have that really nifty, bright, tweedy effect going. So. Carry on for 18 more rows and I will see you then. Ooh, we're looking into the great big basket. I'm at the end of row 30. So row 30 was 18 rows over top of row 12. So we ended off at row 12. I said work another 18 rows. That brings you up to the end of row 30. Make sure you're in alignment with that little dog. That's where we started row 11, which is the ridge row. And you should be right on top of that, 18, 19 rows above it. So end of row 30, now we're gonna put in some basket handles. That'll make it easier to cart this thing around the house. We're going to begin by chaining eight. So this is row 31, chain eight to begin. Oh, so pretty. We're going to skip eight stitches, find the ninth one, and single crochet into it. There we go. You're going to single crochet into the next 31 stitches, and I'll hook up with you at stitch number 40. Once you arrive at stitch number 40, you will be directly opposite the first chain handle we made. And we're going to repeat. We're going to chain another 8. There's 8. Skip another 8 stitches. Find the ninth and single crochet into it. You're going to single crochet in each stitch back to the beginning. That is the end of row 31. You'll still have 80 stitches all the way around, but 16 of them will be chains because we've got our two little chained handles now. So there's one, the other one's right opposite. You're going to work three more rows of single crochet into each stitch. So one stitch, one single crochet, and make sure you single crochet into each of those eight stitches that run across the tops of your handles. So count eight all the way across, just so you know you've got them all. Single crochet into each stitch all the way around. You're going to work three more rows. So there'll be a row that runs over top of your handles, and then two more rows on top of that. And that will be row 34 that we finish on, and that will be the end of the basket. And I'll catch up with you there. At the end of row 34, you should be back to just before where your first handle starts. You're still at 80 stitches. You're going to slip stitch to join, to finish off, and then you're going to snip all three of those strands. 
Make sure you get all three and you pull them back through that loop on your hook to fasten off. Pull it nice and tight and then you can take your yarn needle and flip up the brim so that you're looking on the inside of the basket and you can just weave those little tails in back and forth underneath the stitches in the last row. So make sure you get all three of those ends. And then just go back over top and back and forth through those same stitches a few times until all of your yarn has disappeared. <laughs> yeah, it's that big. <laughs> and there you go, everybody. A great, big, beautiful basket made holding three strands of yarn held together with a mighty big hook. And it turns out so nicely. You've got a couple of handles. You can drag it around the house. You can put stuff in it, including yourself, maybe the kids. <laughs> We hope you enjoyed making this great big basket along with us this week, and we will see you soon here on the Jaden Stitches Show. Until then, stay safe, stay crafty, and have an awesome week, everybody. Bye! <laughs>